we're trying to make the most reckless vehicle we can do. And we want it to be, you know, crazy. My name's Rob Innes, creator of the Sea Breacher, the coolest watercraft on the water. The Sea Breacher, it's a boat, but it approaches the water in a very different way, especially when you drive it. It can be pretty terrifying for people that are not used to it. The Sea Breacher starts out at a 260 horsepower supercharged engine, which is already a pretty high performance package. You can go beneath the water, above the water. You can roll over the top of the water. It's a whole new level of excitement with the water. We want it to be, you know, crazy. It's like having a fighter jet that can move between air and water. I grew up in New Zealand. I didn't have any engineering background, didn't have any mechanical experience whatsoever. I met my wife, who's American, so she eventually convinced me to move over here. Uh, and this is home now. I've been living here a little bit over 20 years now. I worked in probably four different boatyards, which was pretty miserable hard work, so I, I can relate to my guys. I've done all those jobs. I know that. Long before it was a company, in a space was just me screwing around and meeting up with different people, collaborating with them on different projects. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get a job designing things for someone else, so ultimately I had to kind of pave my own way and say, all right, I'm going to have to design and build my own stuff. Now I'm the creator of the Jetivator. Whereas the Sea Breach, we'd invested so much time and money into it that we didn't really have any choice. If the Jetivator had failed right off the bat, I probably would have just like, eh, let's not bother. The Sea Breacher was just disappointment after disappointment after disappointment, and those disappointments slowly got smaller. The Jetivator, right from sort of prototype number one, it's like, this works. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> like, we were in control of it. It took us eight years of just playing around, having another job, and then finally, I th we sold one boat. This is actually Sea Breacher number one. It's fast, it's dangerous, it has no flotation in it whatsoever, but it's just such a unique experience to drive this boat. The first feeling of driving the very first Sea Breacher that we built, that was rough. It leaked, so every time you dived in the water, it was like you getting a shower to the face. So it was terrifying, like I thought I was going to drown. Now, the boats have evolved over time. We've made them stronger, more powerful. So most people don't actually understand just how messy it is to build something like a sea breacher. When they're all finished, they look phenomenal and beautiful, but they start out looking like crap. You know, they're rough, they're raw, you know, there's a lot of custom pieces that need to go in here, and that's what eats up so much time. Showing up with the Sea Breacher is really entertaining because people don't always know what it is. Sometimes they think it's a plane with really stubby wings. Sometimes they think it's a movie prop, you know, that's just fake. You know, we, they go into every corner of the globe you can imagine. Obviously very popular in the Middle East and Asia, but we've got them in New Zealand, Australia, South America, a lot in the United States now. I'm far more willing to say yes to a project that we haven't done before, that's exciting and new. I don't want to be a manufacturer. I want to be a, a coach builder in the traditional sense of the word, where you you handcraft something, and you sometimes put more resources in than you charge someone for, and we do do that a lot. I know the Sea Breacher sounds really expensive, and a lot of people give us grief. It's like, oh, you could build that for $50,000. You could, but it wouldn't be as cool. Ultimately, I just want to build unique things that are kind of have a niche that they're not necessarily going to be a replacement for anything. <laughs>